Social Plug Podcast. What's going on, everybody? I am Johnny Martinez, and you are plugged into the Social Plug Podcast. We will connect you to Level Up, and where we discuss and highlight ordinary people doing extraordinary things. We are always powered by Social Plug Media. Today, we got the distinct honor and privilege of being downtown San Antonio in San Antonio's newest rooftop bar and lounge with my man here, Nick Marquez. I also got Jesse E. as our co-host. And I got J-Rock and Bad Boy Ben behind the scenes. What's going on, everybody? You're in for a treat. Yeah. So we'll go as long as the sun lets us go. All right. So we got a lot to cover with Nick. What's going on, Nick? How are you? Congrats on this new bar, man. Thank you. This is a badass spot right downtown center of San Antonio. Three stories. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears came into this thing. Uh, It just didn't happen overnight, man. You had a great team, uh, a lot of resources, a lot of people put their hearts and souls into this project, man. Yes, sir. So tell us about that. Yeah, I, I, it took about um, a year and a half total from start to finish. I had some breaks in there because of uh, various reasons. You know, we had the fire at Old Main Ice House in November 23, yep. unfortunately. That sent me back a good three to four months. Had some other setbacks in the middle of it. Um, but from start to finish, year and a half. And, you know, the whole process was not just, hey, take over a space and throw a few things in there and open up. It was I, I bought this property, which is over 110 years old. Wow. Um, it's a historical landmark in um, San Antonio. Yeah. So that automatically takes everything to another level as far as timing, planning, um, codes, ordinances, things like that. So, you know, I had to take our plans, my design, all the way to a historical committee, go through that process, um, you know, which wasn't too difficult. It's just time consuming um, and getting everything approved and then going through the city permit process um, and then the construction. The construction's a lot. This is a, like I said, a 114-year-old property that right. had no nothing good in it. The pipes and yeah, the, everything. Did everything it have asbestos? New. It probably had asbestos it did, in it. it. Luckily, it did not. But uh, we did have to get, I have new plumbing, new mechanical, new electrical, everything. We even put about, I don't remember the number, 50 to 60 new piers. Because the actual house itself is on uh, yeah. pier and beam. Pier and beam. And then we added on... Um, the three-story patio to the house. Yeah. So that yeah. was the most difficult part. Oh, so this part wasn't even added when you first started. Yeah, this no, this is all new. Oh wow. This is just the rooftop of this of this building. Yeah. Damn. Just, so we're not even on it. That's the original rooftop right over here to yeah. the house. And then this is all new. So it's a three-story addition. So there's 25 foot piers into the grounds drilled in, and then we have all the pier in uh, the concrete level one. Then we added two in the decking and then three. And then here we are, and an elevator. So let me kind of set this, the stage here. So like I said earlier, I'm downtown San Antonio. I can see Hemisphere Tower. I can see the Marriott, the Grand Hyatt. Behind me, I mean, you got the skyline of San Antonio. Beautiful. It's and beautiful. you can just lounge up here, conversate. You can have parties up here. Just chill, drink, relax. So this is definitely a vibe. And it's three stories. So there's a bar on the first level and on the second level. And there's little rooms. They look like private areas where you can just lounge and, and there's couches and things in there. Yeah. yeah. So the entire bar is almost 11,000 square feet. Okay. So it's 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 a massive bar. There's two full bars on the bottom floor, in and out. There's another full bar on the second floor. Then here is open, but we're working on already, I'm working on already adding a third bar to the top because it, the crowd has been so large, right. which has been awesome. And I, you know, it's amazing to see. Yes. Uh, but it's just, you know, I built this not to just be bar. I built it to be a destination spot. You know, take it to another level here in San Antonio and meet with what everything is doing. You know, with the Pearl, River North, St. Mary's, all the new development, I wanted to really try to stand out and bring something large to the table. Dude, uh, I love it. So I got Highway, uh, what's 35 right here? 37, yeah, 37. 37, so it's not too far, but it gives you the ambiance, like you're downtown, man. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I love that, and I got your bartender out there. You got a great staff, by the way. Thank you. All right, Thank you. bringing me out some. Uh, this nice. What service. is that? What is some, that? Some, some bullet. Stars. Bullet, baby. Bullet. Just showed up type. magically, just like that. I love so, it. So <laughs> I love me some bullet, man. And, and let's talk about your your bar selection. What what do you got? Wine? You got just alcohol? Yeah, it's, what do you it's, got? it's a full bar. You know, so it, it's everything and everything. Any type of liquor you like, we have. Any variation of it, we have. You know, standard beer selection. All your favorite beers. You know, we're this is. The biggest thing I would say, this is not a niche bar, you know, where it's just this type of stuff here or this aura, aura or whatever here. It's for everyone and anybody. 
and on a grand scale of things. We want to fit as many people as we can in here. We want it to be the destination spot. Start your night, end your night, doesn't matter. Happy hour, late night. Yeah. Everything. It's so speaking about fitting as many people, what is the actual capacity here for this this venue here? Oh. What do you think? What, what's the what's the fire All of them. code? All well, of what's them. the fire code, and what do you think you can actually squeeze? Yeah, it's within the fire code. That's what yeah, we're yes, going to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. That's all I'll say. We're, we're within the fire code, but I think on on the the fire the CFO we have, I think it's around three hundred. Wow. Uh, three hundred. I yeah, mean, it's so. beautiful. So let me ask you this: When you first saw this building and it was for sale, when did the idea come to you? You're like, I want to turn that into a three story because I mean, obviously that's an uphill battle. So when did that idea come to you and you're like, I'm going to do this? Well, I was, you know, I have three other bars currently and I've been in the bar business for nine, almost 10 years. And so I've been looking in downtown for quite some time, probably maybe six months to a year. Um, and I was looking for either a new concept because each of my bars were different concept or expanding the bar house concept because I really, really love that one. Yeah. And then, you know, just looking for an old house. So I'm also in real estate. So I was looking around and I came across this property, an old, you know, historical house large downtown prime property and i said you know Beautiful. what this is almost perfect plus you know to everyone's credit down here to bentley's and lucky duck social spot they have very created this environment down here which yeah. is, you know has all the room to expand and the crowd is coming down here san, san antonio is supporting it so on top of the location the house then you already have a great crowd already you know i had to i had to move forward yeah. but as far as three stories and all that i saw the house and the idea you know, I was with a friend coming to Lucky Duck for the first time sometime after it opens, and I really, you know, I've been to Bentley's, I've been to other places down here, but I've never been to Lucky Duck. Didn't realize when I went on to the second store of the Lucky Duck, you know, you can see the whole damn skyline. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you just don't. You don't get to it, see it that. It wasn't really usually. advertised too much on that, and it's like, oh, I can't believe the skyline. You can see it from their second story. Yeah. It was wild. So when I saw that and then this property, I was like, okay. You know, and I had to take it to another level. Um, hey, Nick, I got a question. So yeah. I was watching our last podcast that we did, right? And you talked about how, and Johnny kind of brought this up too, how you're uh, you're, you're really community over uh, competition. Right. Right? But now that you're here and you see these other bars that are next to you, are, do you think they see you that way? And and, and have you switched that as well? Or is it kind of you still I, thinking the same I, thing? I honestly think almost every single one in this area and all throughout San Antonio is very supportive um, someone's gonna say it's more so than the suburbs. Yeah, honestly, no, I mean, people down here, all the barnos. The first night I opened, um, you know, shout out some people: Clint from Mave, uh, Trip from River North Ice House, Michael from Lucky Duck, oh, yeah. uh, all the guys from Social Spot, all here supporting me, saying hello, you know, welcome to the neighborhood type That's things. Awesome, man. Uh, it was awesome. So, so yeah, I, how I think. Much, how much does yeah. that mean to you, man? Just oh, a lot. As, as, as a new guy here in San Antonio, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not new to San Antonio. No, but I'm as not. far as a business goes, in yeah. this in this area that has all these bars, it's not saturated, but some business owners don't like a new business just like theirs coming. Sure, in. that's sure. true. Uh, so, honestly, it meant the world, and uh, you know, as we described before, the, the amount of time and effort and energy I put into this place is almost, it, you know, it's it's indescribable. I can't describe it. It's it's online? crazy. I think a lot of my close friends kind of see it. I think uh, other business owners see it. But man, I, I'm exhausted. I've been exhausted. Um, and to see other business owners come and support me like that, just like that, not even knowing. Never met Clint before, never met Trip before, um, never met uh, a few of these guys, honestly. Yeah, and and they're awesome, super man. supportive. So, but now we have this open line of communication. You know, yeah. the funny story is we were so, so busy the first night, so busy, we were running low on cups. So actually, they, you know, Clint and Trip were texting me, and you know, Trip came over in the golf cart and, and yeah. brought me cups. Right. Oh wow! You know, oh, wow. I mean, that's just, awesome, man. it's Heck the littlest yeah. thing, but it yeah. goes the longest way. Yeah. And, and now we have a great open line of communication. But you know, he's right around the corner. Clint's right around the corner. All these other guys are around the corner. Social Spot, Lucky Duck. Now we can all work together. Yeah. And the downtown environment is different. You know, the suburbs are amazing, and they have their own bars, just like New Braunfels. It's very different. Yeah. I'm sure they work together to agree, but downtown is just, I think, another. It's just a whole different world, and not in a bad way. It's just the volume. Right. Yeah. You don't just have the locals of San Antonio. You have the tourists. You have yeah. people all from the suburbs coming here. Like yeah. in New Braunfels, you have New Braunfels, and maybe a little San Marcos, maybe a little Shirt Cibolo. Right. Shirt Cibolo, you have Shirt Cibolo and a little surrounding areas. Right. And, of course, we get some people that support us all from the around. But 
every day there's someone coming down downtown San Antonio. Yeah. And not yeah. only that, people from all over when they come to the NBA games yes, or, or whatever. Convention center, you know, all that stuff. People come from all over. Dude, so you I, have yeah. conventions every single weekend. Right. Yeah. Almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and this, you know, we don't want just one person to come here. We want them to experience downtown San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. And that's, it's, that's it's market sharing for everybody. Yeah, exactly. There, there's enough. For everybody to eat here, man, each and group, drink. Right, each group can come. I mean, we have groups coming early, late, but there's, you know, we're, you know, my security and I ask them, where are you guys coming from? You know, oh, we're coming from here. We came from the Spurs game. We came from our hotel. We have no idea. We've never been here. You know, there's always something different, yeah. and that's what's so exciting to have a bar like this, this large, because you can host and bring so many people, and every day is different. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's very exciting. You talked about all the stress, everything you had to pull off to make this happen. You made it happen. It's beautiful. Now, let me ask you this. You've been open now for, what, about 10 days, right? You had that first initial 10-day yeah, pop? Yeah, roughly, yeah, 10, 12 days, yeah. What's your thoughts now that you've seen the business come in? You see what its potential is, how amazing it went those first 10 days. Like, how did it make you feel when you're like, damn, this shit is really happening right yeah, now? Yeah, you know? uh, I really haven't had time to really think about All I know is I have to add more and build more. Yes. <laughs> yes so that, he doesn't stop, y'all. Yeah, that's, that's, I need to, we're going to work on adding a third bar, I'm sorry, a fourth bar up on the rooftop, um, adding more bathrooms, uh, which will be difficult, and, and I, I just wish, you know, customers notice that and, and are waiting a little bit longer on the weekends, but it's not too bad. But the biggest thing is we have restrictions within the historical building. Yeah. Yes. There's only so many bathrooms we can add, things like that. And, you know, the biggest thing is everyone was trying to use the bathrooms upstairs when there's eight stalls downstairs. Yeah. So just little signage and little changes, but when you have, that's what happens at any business, not just a bar. When you first open, you can plan as much as you want, have all the experience. There's always gonna be something after the first week you're like, okay. Yeah. We need to reevaluate. We need to change. We need to evolve. And I think all the customers will see that too. Yeah. Um, instead of, um, you know, and all the feedback, honestly, down here, it's on, it's amazing. Yeah, it's all been, positive feedback. Yeah. All customers are great. It doesn't matter where they're from, what they like. Oh, I just like beer. I just like this. Yeah. I like DJs. I like live music. It doesn't matter. It's all positive feedback yeah. because we're, again, we're gearing for the bar here and. I think all these other bars around us are gearing for anyone and everyone. Yeah. yeah. You know, 21 and up, mm-hmm. of course, but it's not just a, a cocktail bar where, you know, yep. like we discussed before, you know, great cocktails, people like that. But or even like a live band only. Right. It's, it's, it's small everything. little things that work for other bars. But this, these bars are more like, I, I hate to compare, but this is kind of like a six street, yes. rainy street goal of ours, I think, down here to have, and, you know, for one of my uh, friends in, in San Antonio that does a lot of planning, urban planning, these are micro districts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're trying to create micro districts. It's not about just me and Bar House. It's a micro district. So, like, you know, the city has started River North, which is right here. Literally, we're in River North, right past the Pearl. This is a huge micro district with so many different things to do. Yeah. And the whole goal is just get them to River North. You so know, it's kind of like South Town. South Town, exactly. you got Pearl. Yeah. Right. And you got Alamo Heights, and but this. Yeah, but it's so the micro districts San Antonio right now are essentially South Town, St. Mary's Strip, Riverwalk, like downtown, downtown, and then River North, Pearl area. And you don't want to be in this business, you don't want to be in an island. Right. You know, it's yeah. very difficult to do business even in downtown or even in New Braunfels. You know, you got everyone on West San Antonio Street yeah. or right around it. And then if you have someone out on, you know, uh, 306, or Creekside, Creekside. Or Creekside. It's just a little bit different. You're, yeah. you're on an island. The nightlife area is down in West San Antonio. Yeah. And in my opinion, as much people may go through, I think it creates safety because you have more security all in one place. You have more lights, more parking, and you have, you know, the local police can also help monitor one area instead of like islands yeah. of bars all over town. You well, know, that's kind of happening in Church Cibolo there's little islands popping up everywhere. Right. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's true. And not only that, in case you want to check out all different types of options, it's a, a, a couple of dollar Uber ride. Exactly. Yeah, like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check out Bar House or I'm gonna go to this other spot. Everything's so close together as opposed to those islands you're talking about. I mean it's a drive. Right. You know, and not only that, uh, it prevents people from drinking and driving. Yep. You know, long distances. So yeah, I see that point very well, much. Well and so. there's there's some great um, you know the property owners behind us here, they have the ride sharing they're like golf, golf carts, but not oh, electric nice. vehicles. Yeah. But they're free. Oh, what? They have logos on it. They're literally free. You can jump in one and take you all throughout downtown. Do they accept tips or is it just? I'm not sure. I believe so. Wow. But it is free to the customer. Damn, that's amazing. Um, I love that. At least I hope it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm glad <laughs> well, you got we'll wrong fact information. Check it. But those guys are pretty much doing a loop. They come back yeah. here. They go all throughout River North, downtown. Uh, so I, I think that's awesome what they're doing. And, you know, they have the advertising dollars for what's on the... Um, 
the actual goal, you know, yeah. they, they take ads and stuff. And yeah. the reason I'm asking that, because I had came up with that, or well, me and my cousin came up with this idea to do it in your Braunfels to so haul people in golf carts for tubes, right? To hold their tubes so they don't have to walk all far distances. And the insurance alone was like over 55K right. for the insurance. So we're like, well, we're not doing that no more, right? Yeah. But no, I get that. Well, and that's, and that's difficult, in, and especially in the bar business too, the insurance is unbelievably difficult yep. yeah and at night there's limitations on things you can't do it at night it's got to be during yeah. the day because right. it's safety it doesn't have headlights all kinds of things man so nick i want to ask you this the dj seems is on the second floor correct it's it's both so there's djs we have djs on the second floor and the third floor we just did it on saturday okay and we'll have one dj live on the second floor one on the third floor and then we can pipe it in so the third floor is obviously this third floor but a dj second floor can be piped into the entire bar oh i love and that. we can move yeah. that around so you know i can take That's the dj like and just have you. them Lower level and up here. I mean, we can have the jukebox on here. We can hook up the TVs. Yes. Like the Cowboys game is on. Any game is on. We can pipe it into all the speakers. Yeah. So you have that. the Cowboys game on tonight. Uh oh. Is it tonight? It's yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. tonight. The Houston yeah. Texans. Who you guys what? got? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Who you guys yeah, got? So yikes. Uh, I don't know. Nick, I, I, <laughs> I've been I've been lucky to be, uh, come out here on your first opening night. Yeah. Uh, got to hang out with you for a little bit, man. It was awesome, bro. And I love what you're doing, bringing a good vibe. And like you mentioned. You can go to literally like a small strip here and go to yeah. these different yeah, bars. Absolutely. I mean, you saw saw me last night doing the same thing, kind of jumping back and forth. But it feels good to be able to do that and have multiple, you know, locations to go to. Um, but you definitely seen a great scene coming in and out. Yeah. And if y'all haven't been out here, you gotta no, come check you. it out. Hey, so, hey while we got awesome. you there, J Rock, look at that beautiful sign yeah, behind you right there. Look at that, guys. You gotta wait till it gets a little bit darker, man. And it's this beautiful. thing blows and it's That's, freaking uh, awesome, man. Shout out! He actually Thank just you, texted man. me. Maybe he's watching live. Yeah, what's his name? <laughs> Give him a shout out, man. Yeah. That's a badass, that's, badass deal there. Oh, Jay yeah. from Blackout Science makes all my stuff. Yeah, that's a badass. He's sign, amazing. Man. Heck yeah. So uh, I got a couple of shout outs here. Corin Bond said Barhouse SA is amazing. Nick, you did an amazing job as usual, because we all know you do great stuff, man. And then Cynthia Rosales said congrats. Oh yeah. She's the one complaining about uh, not having enough dartboards. So shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's an amazing customer. So that's awesome. You're love amazing, it, Cynthia. She's gonna she's gonna talk trash to me later. So m to answer your question, I predict the Houston Texans are gonna kick uh, the Cowboys' Houston's, ass tonight. Yeah, yeah I predict uh, CJ Stroud's gonna get four touchdowns today. Cowboys are gonna lose by a solid 21. Just to twist that knife while it's in all the Cowboys fans. I'm hey, gonna but the that. fans are loyal. I give them that. They bitch and complain, but they're still loyal. Yeah. To their Cowboys, which loyalty is a is a is an asset to it is you know, to organizations because still you gotta buy that merch. That's how Jerry Jones keeps. You know, Dang, all these guys the yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Well, regardless of win or lose, whatever team you're going for, come to Bar House and watch that yeah. game tonight, Heck man. Yeah, it's a beautiful ambiance. You're going to love this setup, man. It's seriously. And, and also that it's open. People are thinking, like, that you're only open on the weekends, right, Nick? You're open throughout yeah, the week. Yeah, we, we released all these video for the most. I mean, we've been really busy, but a lot of people keep messaging us, hey, um, you're opening on grand opening. No, we're, we're already open. We had our soft open. We're open every day. And then our grand opening event, so to speak, yeah. is on Saturday. But yes, Saturday. we're open daily. So every speaking day of that, that video, man, let's give a shout out to Jake and Momentum Radio, those guys, man, Momentum uh, Media. Have you guys seen that drone footage? Whew. Just yeah. going in and out of the of the facility and just, yeah. And yeah, that takes talent, guys. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Jake and Tannis. Jake and Tannis and there. JG. They're amazing. Hey, let me ask you this. That video, I mean, how many takes did that take? Because that's one of the best videos I've ever seen, uh, man. Honestly, I think Jake did it in one take. Yeah. He did it in one yeah, take? Yeah, oh, I'm that pretty, guy's an I'm animal. positive. Amazing. Yeah, he's, so he's, check he's, that out. Last time I saw it, I had like 50,000 views or something like that. We're at uh, 120,000 on one Woo, really on Instagram. Weird. Yes. I think 200,000 on TikTok on one of the ones. Wow. So check that video oh, out, man. The, you know, bar house, and, and we'll, this is a, we'll this, also post it on this on this page as well. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very unique spot, obviously, right? Because I mean, if you think about it, there's nothing like this in the area, or, or I mean, I'm trying to think. Right, I really, really isn't anything like it. So yeah, in my opinion, I, I don't think there's anything like it. There's definitely some larger bars around, which is good, but uh, you know, like. I'm just trying to think of bottom exchange 1902. Those yeah. are very large. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all unique. Um, 1902 is very detailed. Um, uh, the architecture of that place is amazing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great bars, you know. And in this round the corner, elsewhere, mm -hmm. um, has that unique environment. It's yeah. a lot different what we're doing, but it works. Yeah. El Camino. I mean, there are just so many great places around. And then you know, just down the street, the Pearl. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, the Pullman Market that just opened is is. 
crazy. That whole district is beautiful. Yeah, and so speaking of Pearl, like I said, I heard, shout out to my friends uh, Marcus and Pearl. They actually told me about you a few years ago, and they had positive things to I say about you. I don't know who you. they are. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> Grouchy mamas. But my, my point of bringing them up is, like, you've been doing this now for 10 years. So what got you into the bar business initially when you very first started? How did you get that jump, and what was your motivation to do so? It's a good question. Um, I went to school at Texas State. Oh, nice. I didn't really drink a lot. From, Me too. Yeah. yeah, 18 to <laughs> You 20. didn't drink while you went to Texas State? The first. Impressive. Well, party, my party first foul. year. I went somewhere else college party first year. Foul. I didn't drink. Okay. I transferred to Texas State to, um, you know, I was in Drumline. So I think oh, we talked badass. about this last time. But Drumline's like its own. It's like its own fraternity on yeah. its own. So those we, guys yeah. corrupted me. <laughs> Shout out we, to all we, those guys. We've seen American Pie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they yeah. literally showed up to my door in my apartment when I first moved in and said, you're coming with us. They literally lived in my building next door, and I had no idea. So we started drinking Keystone Light out of a keg. <sighs> Ooh. It's the worst. That puts um, some hair in your chest. But to answer your question, I would started going to Square, you know, around 21, 22. Yeah. And I was just mind blown of that area and how fun it was all the bars working together yeah all the college students having a place to go and nothing to talk about it and i would be sitting in this bar with a couple of my roommates and just saying man who the hell is owning these why yes. are they doing this and how are they how is that process going yeah so it just it just got me motivated and i just got super interested in it and uh, so well, how how did you get that first one ever going? Did you go like did you like you're like I'm gonna do this? I found a property I'm gonna, or there was already a bar already, and you're like, hey, I'm gonna. Or did you work with no, somebody? No, I, I created Old Main on my own at first, and mm -hmm. I found a property in Cibolo. I'm from Church Cibolo area. Yeah. I wanted to do something in my area because, you know, we didn't have a lot of options then. Now there's a ton of options. Yes. Um, but I saw this building and it was unique. It was right in downtown downtown just had a few businesses and uh, I was in real estate that was my goal I got into I quit my job got into real estate to try to save money and hustle save my money found this great property that a lady owns um, practically begged her to let me get a lease to own type deal um, took all the money that I made you know dropped the renovations in made a, a deal with her to purchase the property um, you know around that time and this yeah. It got going and it started blowing up. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't have any money when I started, and the bar was not the best when I first opened. But I was just trying to get something open. Yeah, I remember every, when it first opened. Yeah, every, I used to live I mean, in Cibolo. The, yeah. the inside was great, uh, but the outside was just dirt. Yep, I that whole area, Jeez. and I just kept. I mean, it was ugly. It had a lot of potential though. Yeah, but yeah. so to what I did is every little dollar I made, everything. I mean, I was living in a small apartment sleeping on a mattress still with no bed frame Damn. saving every little money mm -hmm. you know pretty much living like i was in college yeah but every money i made at old main i was dropping back into old main you know i added um the outside bar then we added the stage um kept cleaning it up cleaning it up improving improving making bigger yeah then you know got into the stage and, and started um uh, reaching out to the bigger acts and you know learning the music business a little bit as far as booking the bigger acts like yeah. wade bowen who, who came and support us a lot yeah um, Zach Walter. I, yeah, him. Zach yep. Walter's there, but I had Flatland Caverly there, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But I don't say before <laughs> they blew up, but they were there. Charlie Crockett. I booked Charlie Crockett. Charlie Crockett is amazing. If you haven't heard of him, uh, I hope you have. He's amazing. Um, Wade, Jason Boland came a lot. Stoney oh, LaRue. Wow. Yes. Josh Appett came. Stoney LaRue uh, is my favorite. We got Randy favorite, Rogers uh, once. Waiting for him to come back. Shout out, yeah. Randy. So, <laughs> Randy uh, Rogers, shout out $50,000 for a guitar acoustic set. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm trying to get Randy Rogers on the podcast. Well, yeah. we will. We we'll will see. eventually. But listen, guys, listen to what he just said. He had an idea. He talked about it with his friends, right? And then next thing you know, starts putting the steps together. Slept, ate, did this at all costs. You can do it too, man. But I, I, I admire that because now you're a decade in. Yeah. And look at this shit, man. There's yeah. three stories, baby. Yeah, look just, at this view. Just looking at the monitor and looking back, it's still wild to me that, you know, that I built this and it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, there's other rooftops in the city that have, I would say, maybe a little bit better view, but this is a more unique view because yeah. you have the whole skyline. Yes. But it, again, we're not just a rooftop bar. It's very important to say we're not just a rooftop bar. We are entire just chaos of everything. Yeah. DJs, full bar, large. This is a... The rooftop is a bonus. Yeah, The absolutely. bar house is the bar house, but this is the bonus on the top. Um, on the weekend, just seeing the large crowd in here, listening to DJs, it's just, it's amazing, it's fun. Uh, and he, I don't want to leave up there. 
Right. It's, yeah. it's just an amazing. Thing. I was gonna say too. Either, even though, like, even when you're on the bottom floor, you have the out back patio as well. Like, it's just like, like you said, there's just so much yeah. going on. It's the second story so has a awesome. mind of its own. It's insane. And everyone yeah. loves the second story. Yeah, I do like. Second I story do too, too. But I never thought it would be. Like everyone wants to be on the second story, but yeah. it's it's just I think it's you know credit to the DJs too, and the TV wall and the space. But um, the second story is crazy. That's why we have to add another bar because that bar is just getting. Yeah. And for the record, I, I'm not the DJ by the way. He has other. He has actual <laughs> real badass DJs. I'm just an MC, right? But because yeah, uh, you know Grouchy Mamas, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> nah, <see>? no, I'm <laughs> just so, so Nick, let's let's take a look back. So about a year ago, you were on our podcast, yep. and you were just manifesting this spot. You were Boom. excited. I oh, remember yeah. you were like, oh, man, I got something that works. I can't talk about it yet. I'm going to go do this, this, this. And and we talked about it behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And you were like, I'm going to do it. And you fucking did it, man. Oh, yeah, he took the sure. Nike approach. Yeah, thank you. Did it. And that, just like uh, Jesse said, it takes a lot of perseverance. And you didn't quit. Because the average person would have said, man, this takes a lot of money, a lot of effort that I don't have. I'm going to be set back for 10 years right. with as much money as I'm going to put. And but to, you went for it. Man. And oh, to yeah. chime in on that, this is a historic building, so it's not like he had free range like some of these other commercial buildings. There are certain loopholes that are very strict that he had to go through to make this shit happen. Man. Yes. No, you know? yes, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's quite a road, but I'm, I like challenging myself. I like keeping myself busy. Um, it's just honestly, if not, I like, yeah. just get bored. Yeah. You know, I, I have to be doing something. And now, you know, I have a, an amazing staff. Um, uh, you know, just announced my my manager and other things. So, you know, each day is getting more organized, more the puzzle just, pieces yeah, are and, coming and in so, together, which allows me though to go do more because I've right. been here every day. I want to be here every day. That's how it should be when you first open. Yes. But I also want to, you know, I still have my three other bars. I have my real estate that I like to do. But my thing, I want to find more locations right. throughout Texas, and I just need a little bit more time to travel to do that. You know, for for my what I obviously I'm looking around San Antonio because that's where my Headquarters is. I just moved downtown to a couple yeah. months ago, but I would love to put a bar in Austin, Houston, or Dallas, Fort Worth, something. Wait, let me ask you this: What about San Marcos, where the where the idea all started? I mean, do yeah. you think it's already saturated oh, too much? I don't think it's saturated. It's just limited, limited already. Yeah, because I bet. San Marcos has that limitation on liquor licenses. Yeah. So if you're not <laughs> purchasing someone's existing bar, it's pretty difficult to yeah. find a spot and put a new spot. Hey, there. well, look, I'm going to put this in the air. On on the air right now, there's a place that that I, me and my cousin Jerry have had a residency at for over three years now. It's called Downtown Social. Oh yeah. It just came listed for sale. Maybe by our boy Nick can take oh, over and take yeah, control. Of it. <laughs> no, I can't afford right that. Right. Yeah. Slim right. ten million. I, I'm flattered, but you know, I think it just uh, again, I think that's an amazing place along with the poorhouse. Yeah. But man. that strip, I haven't I haven't been able to go a lot, but I love all those yeah. bars. I love the Black Whale. I love the Phoenix. Um, in San Marcos, I love Zelix. If you haven't been to Zelix, you have to go to Zelix. I've never been there. It's, it's for, it's not just for college; it's for all ages. Right. Yeah. But I also love uh, Shade, the rooftop. It, I, I just, I don't even drink that much anymore. But I love still going to bars and just yeah. hanging out with friends. You know, get a ideas, right? Water. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and well, just, you also get ideas. But too. it's they're meeting places too. Yeah. It's not just bar. I think a lot of people mis misrepresent certain bars. There's just it's just great places, uh, yeah. like yeah. like Zelix and, and Old Main and poorhouse it's just like headquarters yeah in each area right that they've they've done so much hard work and oh yeah. yeah yeah so nick we talked about liquor license limitations and i led the show off talking about sunlight limitations mm. all right so before we wrap up man did you watch the tyson fight oh uh, it was on the background at the bar yes yeah did you have the little netflix buffering yeah problems? we had some buffering issues um but everyone did you know, and certain people are getting mad at us. I'm like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> it was everywhere. It, it was, was everywhere. Yeah, it was everywhere. So did it go the way you thought it would go? Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. In my opinion, I, I had a lot of friends at night that said they were, uh, you know, betting on Tyson to win, betting on Tyson to win, and I, it's just the age gap. But man, I don't want to say it's rigged or not rigged, but it's a little I, scripted. I, it's a little WWE-ish. I think. I think it's entertainment. Entertainment and yeah. what he's doing. There's, there's no one. As much as you may not like. The Paul brothers, yeah. the way they set up their entertainment complex is on another level, Whew. and every single person that day is just talking about it. Right. So, and that's what people I don't think realize. Wait a second, I'm talking about this fight. Yeah. And, and you know, from the slap. Yeah, ladies to men, to doesn't matter who. You don't even have to know boxing. Every single person of every walk of life 
was talking about that damn yeah. fight. Yep. Yeah. And it was almost as popular as the election. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> crazy. It's, right? it's just crazy. Yeah. But as far as Jeez. the actual boxing event, it's also a letdown. And I just don't, I think that's what they need to fix. Right. Yeah. There's, you can't pull everyone in and then present them nothing. Right. You I know, agree. that's what's happening. It's a letdown. And, you know, in the end of the day, Mike Tyson gets 20 million. What's his name? Gets, gets 40, 40 million. million. And then we're out. You know, there, there's no bucks. way <laughs> so. Jake Paul would could have lost because if he did, his career would be over. Correct. And Mike yeah. Tyson, whether he wins or lose, loses his career. Yeah, is he's over, fine. Well, regardless. Uh, I'll say this: uh, one of my uh, good friends, uh, Louis Scott, he owns Eight Figure Firm, and uh, I'm his DJ for all his events. He said this: he said this should go to show you that over 30, 40 years ago, Mike Tyson started his brand, and it's paying off even four decades later, where he's getting paid 20 million dollars just to show up. So the point is, build your brand, stick by your brand and you never know how far it can take you as long as you stay as long as you stay consistent so right? you know who else is like that Shaq yeah Snoop Dogg it's definitely Snoop Dogg and Nick Marquez <laughs> Nick Marquez he's a pioneer baby <laughs> no but well, I was gonna say Joe Rogan Joe Rogan Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan because he started off well and, and you got to look at the Mike back to Mike Tyson he was the most hated man on the planet mm -hmm. yeah and now everyone freaking loves that guy loves him he's like a I big mean, teddy seriously. bear yeah so yeah. you just it's, it's just crazy to see the the involvement and how and how he tried to, you know, fix his character, improve on. Same thing with Joe Rogan. When Joe Rogan started and hosted Fear Factory, mm -hmm. everyone hated that guy. Yeah. And now he's pretty much determining presidential all, elections. All, all <laughs> time, whether we like it or not, he has an unbelievable yeah. following and saying. Yeah. And you know, it's it's more of a common sense politics yeah. happening. Same with Bill Maher. Bill Maher used to be well, he's still far left, right? Yeah. But he's he's more in the middle now. He's also not afraid to call out both sides. That's right. what people want. Right. That's what I want to see. Yeah. I want to see both sides. Hey, this side is really ridiculous, but also this side is. Yeah. Instead of these lopsided, I think that's why the legacy media type stuff they were talking about it, Where, is you know more people are going for podcasts because everyone's talking about something a little bit more yeah. to affects them personally. Yeah not just something yeah. that doesn't affect them personally. What, what I love about the podcast is you can have actual discussion, right. conversations, yes. and getting the meat and potatoes of the person. Right. Instead of just an on-the-surface look. Right. Hey, cool, you're a bar owner. Okay, what else? Right. Yeah. We want to know about you, and that's what... Yeah, who is the, Nick? That's right. the magic be, that the podcast... It can be live fact-check, too. Like, yeah. hey... Yeah. This is a fact. This is a research. Obviously, you can still look into it, and people will try to prove that wrong or whatever. But at least you can discuss all parties, and then let the people decide for themselves. That's the that's the whole point is having that choice. Right. Yeah. Having the freedom to do that. And hey, we we got Jenny Olivares here. Said I like to use your place as a networking event for all upcoming paychecks events. Done. Oh. So, sold. Sold, baby. Yep. And then she says, spend money to make money. So whatever we we're talking about, you have to invest money. You can't just start a business. Uh, and not expect to pay out of pocket somehow. And you had to pay out of pocket. I'm sure you had some kind of savings account, something where you had to oh, give. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. That's just part absolutely. of the, that's just well, part it, of the it, risk. It, 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 yeah. it just goes back to when he first started. He was sleeping, you know, on, on, a mattress. On, a, on, a, on an air mattress, right? Trying to get this thing rolling. Every dollar he made went back into Old Main. And now look at it. Sacrifice, it's, man. Boom, baby. Yeah. Started from the border, now you're here, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> look, at this look at that view. No, dude. Look at that so, view, guys. Just, I mean, seriously, it's it's amazing, man. It, it's breathtaking. It, it's it's beautiful, and man, I'm just very proud of you, bro. Yeah. It, it's amazing to see this just come together. The, just squeeze the building like the whole Apollo 13. <laughs> so, so Nick, before we yeah, wrap up, do you want to give any shout outs to anybody, anybody uh, that you have in mind that's uh, you know giving you a lot of help or somebody that well, you I want didn't to mention reach? before, but Jody from the Friendly Spot is amazing. Okay. Um, she owns the Friendly Shop with her husband, and she's been unbelievably helpful to me down here. Um, just meeting contacts. I have all the contacts in the world from Shirt Cibolo to Braunfels area. Didn't have a lot down here. She's helped me tremendously um, get contacts. And then, uh, honestly, the city itself, I think, overall, the city of San Antonio is a shout out from all the customers, uh, the different people coming, the city itself, the inspectors. I mean, it really was. Uh, a pretty great process. It's just time consuming and detailed. And yeah. you just can't, yes, there's days where you're upset. There's days where things don't make a lot of sense, but it's, they really helped me with the process because the San Antonio process is much different than shirts, simple and brothels right. and all right. that. Yeah. It's a bigger, it's a bigger city. There's way more, but I mean, credit to them. There's a lot of stuff going on down here and it, it's a lot to manage. So I would shout out there. And then also like, like we did earlier, Jake and Tannis and everyone yeah. from Momentum Media, I mean, you know, I had a vision, and they know how to create that vision yep. into video yep. um, at a high quality rate, and those guys are amazing. Um, yeah, and my staff, my bartenders, 
Heather, my manager from my uh, Heather is my friend from kindergarten. She's managing Old Main Barhouse Church and Hidden Grove. Oh wow! She's been extremely hopeful during these last four weeks because I've really just been here. I'm sure that makes you feel so grateful to have someone you trust yes. just like that, right? Running yes, that absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, I mean, it's been treated like her own. Uh, but there's a lot to do in the bar industry, especially with four bars. There's a lot to keep track of. Bro, and also you're keeping track of your fitness, man. Yes. Looking uh, great, bro. Not, not, not to call you out, but both of us <laughs> yeah, looked that... a little different last year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Y'all did. Hey. I just looked the other day. I was like, yeah. man, that's that's it's crazy. But it's, it's good to see that. But, yeah, I joined uh, um, a shout-out to uh, Warhouse Gym downtown. Amazing, amazing facility. It's crazy. Uh, I can't even describe it to you, but honestly – you know, I've upped my cardio a lot. You know, last year, if you said, let's go run 10, 15 minutes, no. Yeah. No, I would just make an excuse and leave. Right, but now, right. my cardio is not crazy. Trust me, I can't run a marathon right but now. But it's better. But I can go run for 10, 15 minutes straight. Good. And it feels amazing. I'm lifting weights. And that, honestly, that has really helped me get through these days. I was averaging right at the peak of our construction here, right before open, like 18 to 20,000 steps. Yeah. Damn. And I don't uh, care. Like, there's, I'm that's sure there's 10 to 11 there. miles. Yeah, yeah. There, I, there's people out there that are probably walking more or less, but for me, uh, averaging, what, I was averaging 7,500. Hey, it was crazy, but it, I, I never, I was never shut down because my, my fitness was a little bit I love that. And yeah. before the elevators were built in, you had to walk your ass all the way up here and down. That's yeah, three flights of stairs. Yeah, the elevator still doesn't work, but it will soon. It will soon. <laughs> J-Rock could attest to that. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I all this equipment, equipment had to up. come upstairs. Bringing all this equipment up, man, it was pretty awesome. Chico Malo came so up. He's like, I'm going to need about five minutes, guys. Nick, you definitely are an ordinary dude, but you're doing extraordinary things. Hell yeah. You. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I really um, appreciate yeah, that. It's, it's remarkable what, what you're doing, and, and I can't wait to see your journey. It's going to go on and on. You're going to open up more stuff and inspire more people and motivate. Yes, the absolutely. Masses, I hope man. so. I hope so. And you keep surrounding yourself with good people, good things will happen to you, man. Yeah. Good, smart people. Yes. And I, I want to circle back before we get off to one thing that Nick said. He said he reached out to a lady that owned an area. He be practically begged her to give him a chance as far as, far as uh, you said, for sale or for rent by owner. Yeah, she, she helped me. She had the building. Um, she didn't know what to do with the building. I presented an idea to her, and, and she was very helpful to help me get started and, and allow me to put the bar in that building and then uh, lease from her and then initially uh, purchase the property, you know? But so. my point is he wasn't afraid to ask, so you don't be afraid to ask either. You got an idea you want to do, man, just ask. Yep. Yeah. If they say no, go to the next person. Another no is just closer to the yes, 100. man, so well, proud of you on and that. And also on the business side of things, I mean, everyone knows this has a business, but you have to be pushy, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. You know, I'm not one. I work very, very hard to get where I'm at do what I do and I'm not going to get taken advantage of and no one should get taken advantage of or walked over and unfortunately sometimes you got to be a little pushy not rude yeah to the point I'm sure stern people, baby sure be people, deliberate some people probably think I'm rude but uh, you know it's 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 they always say oh it's my family it's my business it's yeah. also me yep. it's, it's it's both parties it has to meet in the middle so love that J-Rock did you have something uh yeah look at, this way. look at this badass uh <laughs> sign that's now look at that. hey hey it's glowing beep, 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 beep. No, oh, no. i was just gonna say uh yeah y'all both lost the weight and i freaking gained it so now i'm back on it so. hey, well, hey don't leave no, me yeah. out fucker I, I was, <laughs> i'm trying to catch up to nick over here there well, well j-rock likes eating those kind of salad tacos yeah, i do and, man and well, the brisket I, that's tacos. all i gotta stop now pretty soon yeah. so we'll talk it's, about that later it's so, for the yeah. wrestling career that's what it's yeah that's what it is there you go see, <laughs> see nick knows what's up man so nick so where else can we find you besides here at bar house today man yeah what's um up? <laughs> uh, old main ice house in Ciblo, uh bar house and shirts and hidden grove and shirts Social media? Are you all over social media? Um, the bar house is at bar house SA. Yep. Uh, mine is at body by Nick. I need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like on, bars right. by Nick. But, uh, it, we'll bro. call it. We'll call it bar. We'll call uh, it bars by Nick. I was a personal Nick. trainer once upon a time. <laughs> really? Yeah, like when I was. 20, 21, 22. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to call it Bars by Nick. Uh, yeah. That's exactly yeah. Bars by Nick. Uh, well, hell yeah, yeah man. It's, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure and honor being here. I know the sun didn't work with us, but guess what? I think we got everything we needed to get out. Yeah, yeah, this sure. is a phenomenal spot. This is a hot spot. San Antonio's newest rooftop large, uh, lounge and bar. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a game changer for a lot of people. Yep. So come out, like we talked about earlier. Uh, you can have events here. You can have uh, baby showers, whatever, parties, bachelorette parties, whatever your heart desires. Just reach out to Nick, and I'm sure him and his staff will take care of you. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Jer Jesse, you got anything else? Man, I'm just honored to be here. I'm so proud of Nick. And like I said, I've, I've, I used to work in New Orleans for 16 years. I was in the bar circuit even before that in Destin, Florida. So to see what you bring it to, you, to San Antonio and to shirts is, is badass, bro. Thank you. I Thank love you. it. I and not only that, you're a pioneer with your thoughts. You, you make it happen. 
So I'm excited to come check it out. All of you guys come check it out. And I'm excited to check out the DJs and learn from them, man. So I'm very yeah, grateful for that. Absolutely. So I'm ready for a couple of drinks. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where the, where the night goes. Sounds yeah, good. let's thanks, rock Nate. it. Appreciate yes. you. Thank you, guys. For the rest of you, thanks for watching. We are now unplugged from the Social Book Podcast. We'll talk to you soon.